Hi, I'm Shauna Ginsberg reporting for Rethink Breast Cancer at our High Risk Forum. I was able to grab a couple minutes with Dr. Smart. Thank you for being here, Dr. Smart. Thanks. And I have a few questions for you. If someone suspects that they may be at high risk for breast cancer, what is the first thing they should do to assess that possible risk? Of course, they, they should speak with their doctor to be able to better understand which type of risk factor are, are known and which one are the most important. Sometimes we believe that uh, we have higher risk, but when we are discussing with a, a clinician or your doctor, you realize that the risk is maybe uh, overestimated. And sometimes it's true. It's, you, you, some risks are quite clear. What are the new factors being discovered that might classify some women at high risk for breast cancer? For many years, of course, the family history was important, as I mentioned, and also when the case of breast cancer uh, had been diagnosed at early age, for example, uh, in a woman younger than 50 years old. But now we know that in addition, there are other types of genetic markers which are much more frequent in the population, and, but the risk associated with each of these markers are much smaller. But altogether, it's possible to learn about the a signature based on these new markers. And this signature can help to assess the risk more uh, accurately and providing, in fact, a personalized risk assessment mm -hmm. to a larger number of women. Indeed, we believe that uh, maybe, uh, I would say, 5% of women will have a risk uh, greater than threefold, for example. Wow. What is the importance of international studies in understanding breast cancer risk? Oh, this is, I, have the, I have the advantage to, to work with an international team. It's bringing 90 studies around the world, uh, 40 countries, and we have the chance to work with large sample set, in fact, a large number of participants, which is needed to have the statistical power to, uh, to assure that the discovery that we're doing are really true. We should add, in other words, if you would like to assess that a, a genetic marker will increase the risk slightly, let's say 10% increase in risk, 15%, then you really need to collaborate with this large international consortium to have enough people to have the statistical uh, significance in this respect. And we are quite proud, and the advantage is everybody pull together their resources, mm -hmm. they share their, their information, their data, and it's really uh, unique, and uh, I'm proud to be part of such an international team. That's wonderful. Where do you see the future of risk assessment going? The future, let's say in five years, we already characterized some gene 20 years ago, like BRC1, BRC2. Mm -hmm. Other genes are now uh, being much more known, maybe few genes, BALB2, CHECK2, and maybe uh, other type of this gene, which increase the risk by two, threefold. And as I mentioned previously, we, have this, we already discovered hundreds of genetic markers which can be used to determine the genomic risk profiling. Then, with all this information, with, for example, the blood test or a saliva, uh, um, we can detect this genetic risk profile. And this information should be combined with other non-genetic risk factors, like um, breast density or some lifestyle uh, yeah. risk factor, and other, um, like, uh, the, uh, other contraceptive or, or number of kids and age of menopause. And all this information will be integrated together in the risk prediction model. Mm -hmm. And this risk prediction model is there to evaluate and assess the risk more accurately. Then bringing all these markers, all these factors together and giving just a, a simple assessment of the risk. Then the doctor can speak and share the added, uh, share decision making with her patient or, and to be able to to propose the best intervention, which is the best approach, the most sensitive technique, and also the timing, at which age they should start this, the surveillance, the breast cancer screening. Mm -hmm. And are all those other factors that you just mentioned, are they all weighted equally? Or no. are some of them weighted so, heavier yes. than others? Some markers are, are, are playing a role a little bit more significantly. Mm -hmm. For example, there is a, a group of women, a uh, small percentage has a breast density, which are in the highest category, right. and this increased the risk significantly. Mm -hmm. Other risk factors increase slightly. But all these factors act together. Then if you can decrease your risk, or are speaking about modifiable risk, if you can uh, take some action, exercise some uh, 
diet, changing your diet, um, uh, weight loss, uh, etc., then this will help all together. And it's important now, currently we are working on this, it's important in our project with our colleague at the University of Cambridge is to develop this type of um, risk prediction tool which will be able to weigh all these risk factors and integrate this information to, to provide just uh, personalized risk assessment. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.